our honorable speaker and the audience, myself, Enamul Haq Imon, welcome all of you to our seminar, Converting Thesis to Paper, organized by ePortico. ePortico is an online educational platform. It arranges different types of courses, seminars, workshops, and so on. A lot of us either completed or going to complete a thesis or project during our bachelor degree or master's. Using some basic concepts and step-by-step -step approaches, we can convert this thesis to an effective paper, which may help in our academic career. Today's seminar will focus on, but not limited to that. Hopefully, all of us will be benef benefited from it, inshallah. We have an upcoming workshop as well to demonstrate in detail how to write in an article from A to Z. We will announce this today later on, inshallah. You will be glad to know that here today, we got participants from more than 80, plus, 80 universities, and we also get around 30 academicians and researchers in non-academic field. But the participants may mostly around 90% are bachelor and master's uh, student. But we hope that it will be fruitful to every one of us, inshallah. Our speaker today is working as a professor in Sunway University, Malaysia, and as well as Lancaster University, UK. He is listed as highly cited researcher by Clarify Analytics. His citations is around 38,000 in Google Scholar, as well as his age index is around 100. I would like to invite our honorable speaker of this seminar, Professor Dr. Saidur Rahman, for delivering his speech. Thank you, uh, Anamol, for uh, organizing this event for the introduction. Okay, thank you, participant. Salam alaikum and hello. Uh, I will be sharing my experience uh, in writing, particularly, but this is uh, an important issue many participants asking in facebook uh, in other platform so i feel this is a uh, important aspect that need to be uh, covered that need to be sh shared with uh, uh, undergraduate students postgraduate students even we can see some academician again learning is always important for each and everyone uh, so basically, I will be sharing my 23 years of uh, experience in briefly how um, you can convert your uh, thesis to a paper. Let me open my slide first. Can you see my slide? Yes, sir, we can see. Okay. So this is uh, my beloved university where I'm working for last four years plus after spending some time in University of Malaya, in Fahd University, Saudi Arabia. So finally, I joined Sano University where uh, I'm spending time for last four and four years plus. This is a beautiful university. Okay, so I'm from Research Center for Nanomaterials and Energy Technology. As you can see, I'm working in the area of nanomaterials and energy technology. Later, it might be useful for some of you for research collaborations and so on. This is our, uh, some of the statistics about the Sunway quick facts. Uh, so this is a small university, private university, but very potential and very promising university. So 8,000 total students, 63 academic programs, seven academic schools or faculties. And most importantly, as you can see, there are um, 17 research centers. So meaning that uh, Sano University is spending heavily on research. They want to be the, as you can see, their vision is to be world-class. So that's why 
uh, they are investing heavily on research. So that's how uh, research is growing here. This is also the reason I joined Sun University. And it is a not-for-profit private university. So there is a foundation, the Fritia Foundation, money goes there. So from that money, from that income, basically, uh, we get the research funding, we get some other things, scholarships, so a lot of investment because of this. So it is not for profit, so that's why it is a foundation. This is a beautiful place, uh, tourist spot as well. There is a Sunway Pyramid, many of you know. This is inside the city and beautiful city. I'm just uh, staying just in front of this building, so I can see exactly similarly as you can see. Probably they took the photograph from some something like from uh, my house, something like that. It is very integrated city. All the transportations, connections, BRT, LRT, public transports are so well connected. Anyone can easily uh, come in this city. Uh, shopping malls are nearby areas. So it is so convenient. Uh, it's very, very, uh, uh, I feel uh, impressed to be here. I feel very happy to be here. My office is just 10 minutes walking distance. Uh, something there also is not shown, canopy walking distance, that is with solar panel. Some people can do exercise, uh, you know, you can avoid hassle of uh, traffic, noise and sound inside the whole, almost whole, whole city. There is a special uh, breeze, over breeze or eco walk that is not shown here. Okay, and also as you can see, we have some good uh, recognition as well, even though new university. Uh, so I welcome those who are undergraduate, uh, maybe in future also want to study undergraduate A level, uh, school colleges, everything here. Sunway International School there, colleges there, university there. So I welcome um, many of you, those who are interested. Let me start first uh, with uh, um, what I want to share with you. Uh, I think most important thing is uh, the preparation. As you can see, I have written something here. We go primary school, secondary school, uh, high school, and then colleges. For what purpose? To learn and improve our theoretical knowledge on science, physics, mathematics, chemistry, so on, right? That is a learning process. It takes time, five years, 10 years, 12 years, right? So we also know someone spent five years to become a medical doctor. Those who are uh, going to be or those who are MBBS doctor. I'm engineer, so we spent four years to be engineer at Boet. Okay. And importantly, as you can see, I spent 23 years to become a researcher up to this level. So I started my research in 1997, with starting my master's, that is basically research. And until now, I'm still focusing on research. Of course, I'm also doing the academic job, other things, but research is my main focus and still learning. So today also, I spend time, uh, quality time to make it a better presentation so that I can serve your interest. Okay, I took this matter seriously because I have taken this initiative, so I have to serve, I have to fulfill your interest. So you will see later on all my slides, so how much time I spend, and also you will see my experiences. As Enamul also mentioned, some of the <clears throat> recognitions and experiences. So as you can see here, so we need time to go to primary school, secondary school, universities, to be a medical doctor, to be a researcher. So basically, you need to do whatever you want to be. Who you want to be. You want to be a learn research, you want to be a good researcher. So it is not a one day practice, it is not a year practice. It is a lifelong practice. So you need to spend time systematically and regularly. Okay, that is the keyword. So that's what I mean by preparation. You need a good preparation for anything. You want to prepare a cup of coffee, you need a good preparation. Similarly, to be a good researcher, you need strong and long-term preparation. So I'll be talking some time uh, about the preparation. So now, how to learn about the research? Let me share one of my important experience. It is not research, it is about my language uh, incapability. As you know, I'm Bangladeshi. Uh, I uh, studied in Bengali medium, my uh, 
primary, secondary, and college uh, teaching. So when I entered Buet, it is in English medium. So past six months, the day I joined when class was started, I was facing tremendous difficulties. But what to do, I need to go ahead. So at one instance, I was some thinking that I may not uh, be able to continue here, but I also cannot go back. So what is the solution? Then I started to improve my language every day. I started to read English newspaper using dictionary at that time, as you know, that time were not that uh, online software, all these facilities were not at that time. So, you know, uh, learning a half a page or one paragraph, sometimes it took two hours, three hours, few days. But Alhamdulillah, after spending some time, uh, one week uh, it's improving, uh, two weeks improving, one month improving, and after six months, I feel more confident, and then uh, I still uh, continue improving learning. This is how I learn. We learn uh, our language by, you know, uh, to uh, get admission, for example, the ILTS, TOEFL. These are short-term measures just to fulfill your requirement. But if you want to be a good researcher, if you want to be good at language, you need to start from the very beginning, the way that I learned. So the day I joined in Buet, I started learning English and still I'm learning. Similarly, you have to learn research in a similar way that I learned. So learning preparation is very important if you want to be a long-term researcher. Because why I'm giving this focus here, because most of you are undergraduate students. Maybe some of you are first year, second year, third year, even though undergraduate going to complete, but maybe you are uh, intending to pursue your masters. Again, that one is not yet higher level. If I consider Bang uh, with respect to Bangladesh, uh, I'm not sure how strong you are in research. So still you need to learn all the research related, related activities. So this is important slide here. <clears throat> so uh, the, you need to be prepared. You need to select research topics. You need to your, uh, improve your language. These three things I'll be talking here. <clears throat> Uh, what I suggest, rather than just uh, focusing your uh, research uh, at undergraduate level only fourth year, better, I strongly suggest that you start better your research, understanding the research, spend time daily, every day to read the literature, because you have to understand what is literature, what is research, at an online seminar. It's good. We are fortunate that nowadays a lot of seminars are going on online, so you attend them to improve your knowledge. As I mentioned, you need preparation. You need to improve your knowledge. So through this online seminar, you can improve your knowledge. Collaborate with the lecturers, professors who are active in research. Yeah, there are many people, but those who are not active in research, it does not make sense to talk with them, to work with them. So always try to find the people, those who are active in research, those who can motivate you, those who can drive you and slowly establish international or local network. So rather than just starting at the final stage of uh, research at the fourth year, I would suggest rather you start from the uh, first year. That will help you to learn. So three years, if you systematically study, if every day you spend one hour, half an hour, the way that I learn my language, I'm sure that that will boost your confidence. That will make you a strong researcher, good researcher, at least to understand the fundamental things, basic things. So, how to improve basic things also, I will provide some of the slides, some of the links also. Later on, you will have a look. So you might have a <clears throat> question also how to find, select the research topics. And since I'm active in Facebook, LinkedIn, I see a lot of question also how to find the topic. So here uh, I have highlighted some summary. It's not everything, but this probably will help you up to certain level to identify the topic. So. Uh, Again, when you start from the first year, you start to understand research, suddenly it will come that what would be the topics? Okay, this will be a basic question. So how to find the topics? So it is very important thing, which area you want to work, why I want to select this topic. So how to select the topics? Again, uh, I become an engineer. Why? Because I was always good at mathematics. So in my school life, in my college life, in my high school life, I always get uh, in mathematics, uh, almost always every subject uh, 100, whether it is uh, general math, elective math, even in word also, I got always uh, math. So that is my expertise, that is my interest. So if you are very good at uh, math, physics, chemistry, so you select the topics, this is a broad, and from that broad topics, again, 
uh, you can identify, you can tune, you can search, you can, as I mentioned, some of the things, you can enter into the specific topics. If you like fishing, you go and fishing. If you like farming, go and farming. So whatever you have interest. And also I would suggest <clears throat> if parents or guardian, they should not force anyone. There's some, something he or she likes. Uh, as a parents should give the priority to, to their children, to their students, whatever topics they, 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 they like, they are interested, they are expert, they are doing very good. Okay, so this is one of the key things. Then see the profile of top researcher. Okay, so you are at undergraduate level. So you know your university, uh, so there might be profile, there might be a, a list of the people. So you talk with them, you find their, I think nowadays you can find their profile online. You see what is their topics, what they do, what is their research topics, where they have done PhD. Okay, so a lot of things can be done, and that will shed an uh, um, idea that what they are doing. Then you start to talk with them. This is one approach. Familiar with familiar with Scopus, Web of Science, databases for journals, scientific contents. Scopus is a database. Web of Science is a database. Elsevier is a database. You you put your uh, interested topics, energy, chemistry. Okay, SARS and put some people there and who are working, who are working in specific university in Bangladesh. You need to explore a little bit. You have to do your homework. What I don't feel good, sometimes you ask, I'm accounting, can you give me a topic? So you have not done your homework. You no, know, people want to help you, but you have to understand they're also busy people. So you have to be smart to ask a question as well. So you do your homework, okay? You do your homework and then you ask question Maybe 80% of your work you have done and 20% you can ask some other people, collaborators. Definitely this will help solve your problem. Search Google Scholar, ask questions to collaborators, build a network, okay? start to talking with the people, start to communicate with the people. See the global challenges. So this is the way in the next slide you will see the how I found the top 10 global problem. There are global challenging issues, niche area, for example, our country, Bangladesh, we, our ready-made garment sector is the best sector, one of the potential sector. So what are their problems? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> In the garment sectors, the, ener the for example, energy is the global problem, artificial intelligence, data science, data analytics, global top 10, 20 problems, 50 problems. So you put all these keywords in Yahoo, Google, you will find a lot of topics. So that will give you an idea how to find the topics. So I hope this will give you some answers to um, identify your topics, to do your homework, and definitely I'm sure that this will help you at least to identify your topic. So topic is very important. And also topic will help you to be a good researcher, a highly cited researcher, a topics that will help you to publish in good quality journal. So topic in my view is very, very important. Of course, communication is English language is very important as I mentioned, because Books are in English, journals are in English. So if our language is not appropriate, is not up to that level, again, this can be improved through read, write, speak, listen, because you have to communicate your science, communicate your results to the scientific community. So if it is broken, if it is substandard, so you cannot sell your ideas, you cannot sell your some good findings. So again, it will be broken. You cannot entice people. So that's why these three things, the preparation, research topics, languages are very, very important. So these are the global top 10 problem. I did little bit of uh, SARS. As you know, sometimes I also find what's the top 10 challenges in my area. I just put this in uh, Google SARS. So these are the things came out from the uh, references as, as I put at the bottom at the below. So securing cyberspace, uh, economical clean energy, sustaining land, oceans, and so on. So these are the top 10 global problem. So from here again, let's say that uh, someone want to work at the sustainable cities. So in the city, so many things are there. You need energy, you need transport, you need what else? Many, many things. You need land, okay? you need air, water, so many things. So where you want to go? Sustainable cities also need energy, need energy storage. So where you want to go? So you can narrow down, you can fine tune. And this is how can you can select your topic. So these are some of the ways I found top 10. Again, you can identify uh, top 10 problems in energy science, top 10 problems in physics, top 10 problem in social science. So this will help you to identify top 10 global challenges, global problem. And from there, actually you can enter into a topic. So if you 
do you research in systematic way from the first year i'm sure that many basic things you will be even you may know better than your uh, some of the lecturers because many of uh, them may not know all those uh, that the things that i'm going to share here so uh, learning platforms as you know uh, in uh, uh, facebook uh, linkedin in T youtube there are many many challenges uh, so uh, this is one of the uh, b researcher i'm associated with uh, him with uh, sabir sabir uh, actually he's doing a great job this is very good for uh, he, uh, particularly for basic learning okay so a lot of informations there uh, my lecture notes are there so as i mentioned regularly you spend some time half an hour one hour his lecture my lecture and also i put many other um, platform here uh, my intention is not only selective but i don't have enough uh, time to bring each and everyone that's why i mentioned here then there are many many other groups and societies doing this fantastic job great job like eportico uh, my brother um, uh, enamul uh, is organizing uh, bangladesh uh, student uh, union malaysia and so on there are a lot of platform learning platform please uh, regularly watch them gain your knowledge improve your knowledge that basically will help you to be a long term sustainable researcher now i'll be talking about what is research it is important okay so first uh, uh, i want to explain in my own way what i understand rather than putting first what is according to wikipedia as you can see first we are very familiar with the solving problem research is basically a problem okay so we are solving problem that is a research it is very we solve sometimes mathematical problem that is a theory we solve some real life problem okay to improve something to make something better that is basically a definition of a research and very specifically for example we are making something we are developing something that is cost effective at the market there are product but it is highly expensive for example there are catalyst platinum based catalyst platinum is very expensive so now for example i am working on magnesium or graphene so if this materials can be made cost effective way a catalyst we develop that is one third cheaper than the market that is a research because we reduce the cost we save the money efficient product at this moment there is a product for example there is a car it consume huge fuel okay one gallon per mile for example so if you can reduce into half liter how much you are saving you are saving your money you are saving uh, protecting the environment from, from pollutions services models and so on so this is according to my understanding improving something to making something cost effective efficient better this is uh, uh, what i define as a research based on my experience so what is according to wikipedia as you can see it is a creative and systematic work undertaken to increase the stock of knowledge again you are improving knowledge that is also research it involves collection organization analysis of information data okay, to increase the understanding of a topic or issue a research project may be an expansion of the past work in the field uh, rash work is the very important to test validity of instrument any equipment anything you develop to test to to validate to verify to compare it's a procedure it's an experiment through which you do the experiment you get the data you do the research okay so that this uh, problem is checked and verified validated compared for example you see the the uh, you uh, you are using a new material so in this need, material need to be tested so you have to go through procedure you need to go through the experiment you need to do the research and at the end you got the results and you found that fantastic results so your material is will reduce the 50% cost okay that is definition of research so there are two types of research basic research or fundamental research uh, and applied research so primary purpose is to documentation discovery interpretation r and d methods or system for advance of human knowledge this is more on knowledge and this basic knowledge when it is applied for example engineers uh, built a car that is applied okay engineer builds an aeroplane engineers built an building okay all those are applied so basic knowledge is applied to build something 
okay, practical goals like technology, invention. So that is applied. So why we need to do research? Okay, I think the crucial answer is with all of us, we are in a great uh, pandemic situation, uh, outstanding situation, extraordinary situation due to this COVID. Uh, in my life, in your life, probably nobody faced challenges like this. Earlier, these types of uh, challenges, pandemic happened, but not uh, such long time. So, you know, what is this? This is a virus, okay? A tiny virus, nano size virus, no one can see by naked eyes, but no solution yet. So how the, uh, <clears throat> yes, sorry, there are solutions. There are uh, vaccines already. So how this vaccine came? It is by research, right? We know the answer is by research. So there are a number of <clears throat> vaccines already invented by many inventors. So how this came? This is because of systematic research. So they had an idea, they tested it, they have trial, they have gone through the approval process. You know, since last uh, one year, uh, it has been uh, work is going on to develop this vaccine. See, so how long it takes uh, to develop a vaccine? It's long, tedious process. But Alhamdulillah, finally it came. Even, but you can see there are still challenges, side effect. You know, those who are allergic cannot take it. Some are effective, some, some are not highly effective and we are getting some results. So again, it needs to be improved and that is research. We know the robot, <clears throat> so how it came. So this is research. We know social problem, internet addiction, Facebook, YouTube, TV. So there are excessive uses. And as a result, our children, we human being become getting addicted. So this is the problem. This will create our social problem. So if we do the research, why this is happening, then we can find solutions. <clears throat> our government sector, so productivity, efficiency, modernization, it's very important. So how this can be, this problem can be solved by doing research, okay? So renewable energy, sustainable energy, these are intermittent in nature. So what would be the solution? Energy storage. So that's why I'm also working in this area to store the energy. <coughs> new materials, as I mentioned, I'm working in the area of a magazine, new materials. So what is the importance of these materials? This material is highly efficient, highly productive. Electrical conductivity is high. Surface area is high, so it will improve the behavior properties application tremendously, and it can be cost effective. So that will improve something, some behavior, some properties. So I hope you understand the meaning of research. <coughs> so these are additional points also. <coughs> uh, these are key things basically. Normally, these are not normally taught uh, with uh, students, researcher in most cases. I have gone through the research process, but I have never seen, uh, I was never trained, uh, actually, what is the meaning of research? I was trained uh, mainly to publish. Yes, publication, but it should have a purpose. Why you need to publish? It's only for the sake of publish. No, we have to have in our mind that we are doing something so that we become a creative, inventive, and innovative. That should be our prime goal. At the end, whatever we are, we are doing, it's a creative, it is inventive, it is innovative. So that's what I mentioned here, as you can see. <clears throat> Discovery, applied creativity, invention, innovation, all these are related. And what, what do we understand by discovery? Knowledge, concept, you have an idea, new ideas basically. <clears throat> invention, technologies, business models, useful implementation, that is the, the practical applications, uh, practical uh, the product development, commodities, goods, services, experiences, and so on. Of course, generating the new innovative ideas, new knowledge. And as a side benefit also, when we publish, when we do research, when you conduct research, basically this is a training. So I have gone through and now I can give you the training. This is a training, academic growth. Later on, you'll be <clears throat> an academician, you'll be a researcher. So you need to apply for a grant. You need to supervise students. So how you are going to teach them how you are going to supervise them. If you don't have knowledge, if you don't know, if you are not well-trained. And also why this research and publication is important, particularly those who are uh, intending to pursue your higher studies in overseas countries or even in local universities. As you know, you need the scholarship, you need the ILTS, you need the English language, you need the industrial experience, but this may not help sometimes. So what will be the additional benefit if you have prior publication? This will also help you to supplement your CGPA when it is not that high level, for example, less than three, 
in that case, if you have this publication, this will help you. So those are the additional added benefit, side benefit. But of course, the, pri uh, the prime goal or core intention or main purpose should be uh, we, um, a researcher should be a creative, inventive, and innovative. So what is the, uh, the innovation? As I mentioned earlier, something new. If you want to be a good researcher, these are the key things. Something new, something different, something better, something cheaper. Do at different location, do at different time frame, and so on. So these are basically the called the innovation, novelties, something new. <coughs> So why you need to publish? This is the summary <coughs> based on my uh, 23 years of experience. Publish a paper to get a degree. So as I mentioned, these are also necessary requirement, but prime goal should be invention, innovation, creativity. Of course, this will be your side benefit. And these are also requirement in some universities around the world and particularly in Malaysia, if you want to get your master's and PhD, certain number of Scopus and ISI paper need to be published before your degree is awarded. <coughs> you are writing you are going to experimental process. So this is improving your skill. So I have published, let's say 600 papers, 600 times three, so three reviewers. So almost 2000 reviewers gave me the comments. This is how I'm improving again and again, constantly I'm improving. This is how uh, my knowledge also improving, my skill also improving. So once you published, once you are skilled, once you have knowledge, this will boost your self-confidence. That is very important. Once you published, you have number of paper, two paper, three paper, four papers, you will be invited as a reviewer, you will be invited as a co-author, you will be invited, this will help you to establish your network. Without a network, again, without a collaboration, you cannot sustain. For example, I, I, I am 23 years of experience, I have collaboration in Bangladesh, I have collaboration in India, I have collaboration in Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, all over the world. This is how I'm sustaining my research. To solve industrial and global problem, as I mentioned, we have ready-made garment sector. It is a very big sector. A lot of, a lot of problems there. So if we do research, we can solve their problem. There is the energy storage problem. There is a clean air problem. There is a problem in the city. So many, so much so problem. So if we do research, we can solve many of those things. To generate new knowledges, advanced science, disseminate knowledge, recognition. So I will show you, I will share some of my recognition later on. So if you work hard, you'll get a lot of recognition. You'll get bonus, your salary will be there, your promotion will be there. People will appreciate you, you will get international recognition and so on. And this also reflects when you publish in good quality journal, particularly high impact journals, Q1 journals, this reflects your quality. I think that should be our prime goal that my work has quality. I published in Q1 journal. This work is double. This is very uh, important. This is high level of work. This is a niche area. So I think that's something we have done quality work and we should be proud of. So it is an indication of reflection of quality work <clears throat> to improve again continuously through the comments of expert in the field by peer review process. So when you publish, when you submit again, it will be accepted, it will be rejected, it will be major correction, it will be minor corrections. Through this, through this basically, we constantly can improve ourselves <clears throat> and that will make us strong, that will make us better, that will make us close to perfect. Uh, we, we might be academician, so what's that, the weightages? So if you know these weightages and this may help you also later on, because you can get ready, you can prepare yourself for your next promotion from one step to next step. So this is an example I have taken from one of the Malaysian universities website. You see the publication weightages from assistant professor to professor from 30% to 40%. Not only this element, you see the research consultancy, there is a supervision. This is also the, the research element. So it's on an average, Something like 60% OATS is on research. So just by teaching, you can't progress much. If you do, if you are heavily involved in research, there are possibilities that you can progress. Your promotion will be there. You can be recognized. A lot of benefit you will get later on. So these are my some of my recognition I share here. You know, I never plan like that. I just work hard strategically, innovatively as much as I can. Uh, I spend quality time. That is my prime goal, as you know. I came from Guet. You know, the Guet is the uh, symbol of quality, hard work. Uh, the top students are entered there, enrolled there. Uh, so I always try to uh, maintain my level of quality. This is how I published, and as a result, uh, fruits are coming. Alhamdulillah. Uh, these are recognition. These are driving factor, basically, for me. So these are some of them I'm sharing. There are many, many more. Um, I got invitation to examine thesis from Australia, 
uh, Africa, Pakistan, uh, India, as an examiners, as a proposal reviewer, many, many more, more. visiting position, adjunct position. Okay, I review thesis, proposals. I counted a few months back using the small, small things. I earned 2,500 US dollar. Of course, we are researcher. We are not so much hungry for money. We should, our aim should be for improving the science and knowledge. But these are, again, our for bread and butter, basic things. These are sometimes driving factor for motivational factor. Even when I was in University of Malaya for every Q1 paper, University of Malaya um, gave incentives of 6,000 Malaysian ringgit. Uh, that is 120,000, 1 lakh, uh, 20,000 Bangladeshi taka. So at that time, I uh, secured 50,000 Malaysian ringgit uh, through this research and publication. That was the University of Malaya gave to drive uh, the research. That's how University of Malaya also improved in ranking, as you can see. So. These are, uh, to me, most important thing is that these are the recognition, you know, so external and internal recognition. So this basically drive us, motivate us. So when we got the motivation, definitely this will drive us. So now I'll be moving a little bit more about uh, uh, how to convert uh, thesis to journal. That is our main topic. So far, I have uh, talked some of the side ways because simply if you enter into converting thesis to journal, yeah, this is one topics probably those uh, who have ready-made thesis. But my intention, our intention is to train you for long term. That is more sustainable, not just converting thesis to a publication, but what would be your lifelong training, lifelong benefit. So that was the purpose. That's why I started from the preparation, definition of research, definition of thesis. And also, of course, motivation is very, very important. As you can see, I did the quality work, I did the quality research, and now a lot of things are coming. And not only that, I constantly get, got the invitation to join many, many universities. So I'm, I got a, a highly cited research recognition award in 20, uh, 2014. Actually, the four universities invited me uh, to join their universities. And King Fahad University, actually the representative came in, came in Malaysia, uh, flight from uh, King Fahad University to Malaysia to uh, convince me, to discuss me. And after a long discussion at the end, I feel this will be something good. And this is how I joined at, uh, at, at King Fahad University. Even uh, nowadays also, I receive constantly a lot of offer. But uh, as you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here at Malaysia. This university is good. Uh, but to me, if you work hard, job will hunt for you. You don't need to hunt for job, as an example of myself, Alhamdulillah. So now I'll give you some smell, some flavor of what is research, okay? Because our focus is uh, with undergraduate uh, students. So what research elements uh, you have already gone through, okay? So when we were at the school and colleges, we did the experiment, right? We dissect uh, the, we cut the frogs and some of the biological and some physics related did experiment, right? So we are already familiar. Maybe not that extensively, but in that case, maybe we are more focused on results oriented, not the knowledge of uh, lab work or experimental work. I understand because I have gone through that process. So I know that what we really learned at that stage. But those were the elements, right? The lab experiment we do at the undergraduate level, at school level, at college level. So those are basically some elements of research. All those elements did not have novelty, did not have something new. That's repeating something. But that is part of, because you are doing experiment. Okay, in that case, it was not something new, but in, this, in the case of research, you'll be doing something new. That is the difference. So you have done, or you have gone through the lab experiment, assignment, for example, sometimes you do the review, some project, that may be a lab work, that may be a survey work, that may be a literature review, undergraduate thesis, as you know, it can be three credit, it can be six credit. So, this is some sorts of research elements because you have to search, you have to conduct experiment, you have to do survey work depending on your field and so on. Master by a research, basically this is a research work, this is a thesis. Masters by coursework, normally it is majority is the course, but there can be six to 12 credits. PhD is mostly by uh, uh, research, but there might have some theoretical courses. So a lot of research element you already have gone through, you already have knowledge. So those are basically the research elements. But 
you are never trained how to convert this into a paper, how to make this into something a quality. So that quality aspect never were taught. Uh, in my view, uh, I strongly feel because these are uh, the purpose of your getting your degree, okay, to uh, get uh, some marks in that case. So the focus was not something like uh, to produce this as an outcome, as a report uh, that can be published in journals or in newspaper or in some um, you know, media. So that was not the purpose. That was just to get the um, your result and degree. Where is the research? When we do the actual research is basically we need uh, some uh, new novel findings. So uh, this is a definition of a thesis is written a record of uh, work that has been undertaken by a candidate guided by a supervisor. This is a long piece of writing, so it can be uh, 100 pages, 120 uh, pages, it can be 200 pages, it can be 300 pages, okay? For example, for a degree such as PhD and masters and so on. This is important. So uh, to understand what is the difference between thesis content and paper content. So normally for a thesis, there will be a table of content, nomenclature, list of tables, list of figures, acknowledgement, title of thesis, abstract, introduction, background, motivation. There is a long list, right? So that is not my intention to, is to go so details. I'll not talk much about that. So a thesis is a long piece of work that may contain, for example, if it is undergraduate, it may contain 100 to 120 pages. So it is basically quite heavier than a paper. It is a long amount of work. Content is long, pages are long. Okay, it also maybe uh, takes uh, uh, time, maybe one year, okay, six months. But as you can see, co compare here, contents of a paper, it can have a title and affiliation address, few keywords, nomenclature, just some minor thing, abstract, these are minor thing, and most important things, major things are introduction, methodology, result and discussion, conclusions, acknowledgement, references, and then most importantly, it is defined as a IMRAD, introduction, methodology, result, and discussion. So you can see clearly the difference between a thesis and a paper. This is a big, big, big amount of work. It can be uh, 100 to 20 pages, whereas a paper is 100 to 20 pages. So basically, one idea is to convert from big content, large content to a small content. Okay, the, the, the basic contents are almost similar, as you can see here. But this is just a matter of condensing, but it, does, it will not ensure that you can publish. So that's why you need to see that. What will make your paper strong? What will make your paper publishable? Those are the recipes basically in the uh, few next subsequent slide, I'll be focusing uh, key elements, key ingredients uh, that will ensure that can be published. So those are more important than condensing. Condensation, making 100 to 20 pages, it is not that difficult matter. But what should be the content? Again, even it is undergraduate, but the, 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 the definition of any paper, Q1, Q2, it does not relate to it undergraduate, it does not relate to master's PhD, it relates with the quality. If your undergraduate has a quality that better than master's, definitely you can publish. Your quality, undergraduate quality can be better than in some cases, um, a PhD. I have experienced many, many uh, people. I have recruited many people. I work with many people. Unfortunately, in some cases I face, I found that the, even a PhD degree, they have certificate, but cannot produce something like undergraduate. Unfortunately, this, this happens. So how to write papers?